Real quick, I want to apologize for sounding like a dying giraffe. I'm still recovering from COVID, but the show must continue. We have a jam-packed episode for you guys, so sit back and relax and let the setup wars begin. So you just build a brand new shiny PC and you're greeted with this nasty notification on the bottom right corner of your screen. Well, instead of going out there and paying full price for a Windows key, you guys can actually get one for less than $15. That's right, you guys can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key for less than $15 by visiting yourcdkey.com or by clicking my link below and using my code TS20 for that extra 20% off. They also sell Windows 11 and Microsoft Office keys and the same discount code applies. Now once you get your CD key, all you have to do is go into the activation center settings on Windows and put in the new key and watch the watermark disappear. What an interesting coincidence. I literally just got done talking about this setup on the first Reddit React video and here we are with an updated submission. This is Anthony's second time on the show with a mildly upgraded battle station. I'm sure we all remember the badass super ultra wide TIE Fighter Mario layout. I mean who could forget? That's a lot of pixels. I think the curvature of the monitor allows both displays on the sides to be a lot closer to Anthony for this to be actually practical. He still works in the underground construction scene and still uses the setup for gaming and working from home, although he spent the last six months updating it. We still got the Razer peripherals paired with a Logitech G502 mouse and the Razer Nomo speakers. I'm actually glad he kept the little hardware info display from last time. It's such a cool little mod to show system information on your smartphone. Unfortunately, due to how curved the ultra right is, the PC is partially blocked off by the right vertical monitor. It did get an upgrade, however, from a Ryzen 9 3900X to a Ryzen 9 5900X and an RTX 4080 Tough, which has been upgraded from an RTX 2080 Ti. Anthony's now up to date with current gen parts and he's able to keep up with all new games. We still got that dope Halo battle rifle mounted up top, surrounded with some of his other memorabilia. But it looks like he added some greenery to help spice up the look, as well as help lower stress levels. Believe it or not, but even fake plants can help create a stress-free zone and also help replenish your focus. But of course, we can't forget about the custom wall over on the left side that really makes this setup so unique and stand out from the crowd. It's more like a shrine dedicated to what I would assume is his favorite game. I mean, I don't know how many people who would build an entire Call of Duty mystery box just because they're bored. The crate actually doubles as a nice storage container where he keeps his accessories and controllers. I didn't think there was much he could do to improve this setup, but I was wrong. Very nice upgrades overall and still one of my all-time favorite setups on the show. Thanks for coming back on. Floating desk setups are slowly taking over. I'm only kidding. I mean, sure, it's aesthetically pleasing to look at, and it uses a lot less space, but it certainly has its downsides, like no storage, and it's permanent. You can't exactly change your desk out so easily. You would have to remove all the brackets, and most of the time you're gonna need help because it's hard to do it by yourself. But with all that said, I still think it pays off in the end because it really does take the setup to another level. In Danny Toe's case, he went with the Saljan countertop and he hooked it up against the wall using three triangle brackets. I'm not exactly sure what that thing coming out of the ground is though. Like it's got a red handle which looks like a shutoff valve of some sort. So if I had to guess, it's maybe a gas line coming out of the ground and going into the wall, which is an extremely bizarre location for a gas line, at least here in California. Does anyone actually know what that is? Let me know in the comment section, I'm curious. Another downside to this type of layout is that you're basically forced to mount your monitors against the wall because you don't have that extra space behind the desk anymore for a clamp. And honestly, if you're going with a floating desk design, you better commit. I do appreciate the dedication and effort that went into this setup. After all, Danny Toe is a construction worker, so this was probably a piece of cake for him. For peripherals, he's rocking an Apple Maker SK61 paired with a wireless Logitech M185. But what in the actual baboon butthole is that mouse, my guy? Are you actually using a budget $27 office mouse with this setup? This, this has to be just for a reaction, right? This is the type of mouse that those office workers use when they're calling you about your car's extended warranty. 
You know what though? I'll give you a pass because you're using a really nice mouse pad. I see you with the black nexus from the dealsource.tech slash store website. We do have a bunch of new designs for season eight, restocked and ready to go. If you guys wanna help support the channel, check the link down below. For audio, he's rocking a set of JBL Studio monitors for the primary source, but for gaming, he switches over to the Astro A40s and the AT2020 mic that he's got hooked up on the left side of the desk. Cable management is also less forgiving on a floating desk setup since there is really no place to hide them. So you gotta be on top of your game. And for the most part, Denny Toe did a fantastic job with the raceways and cable clips. My guy even has two pencil drawers underneath here, let's go. On the Alex unit to the right is where he keeps the PC. It's a custom build rocking a Ryzen 5 3600X and an MSI RTX 980 Ti. So it's more on the budget side, but it looks really clean with the Lean Leaf fans and the cable extensions. I'm personally not too big of a fan of the acoustic panels on the wall, but I do have to give him some credit on at least coming up with a different pattern. And plus it's symmetrical. But at least follow through and skin your other monitor in carbon fiber to complete the look. You can't just leave the other one alone. Overall though, I think it's a badass setup. I really do love the floating desk look, although I could be biased. And I think you did a pretty good job on the execution for the most part, with a bit of personalization as well. But the mouse choice was a bit sussy baka for me. Either way, thanks for coming on the show. Coming up next is Jumar, who's originally from the Philippines, but he's currently working as a family driver in Abu Dhabi. This is the setup he built in two months for the purpose of gaming and watching YouTube videos. And I gotta just say, the color scheme will always have a special place in my heart. I would say these are arguably two of the best colors that complement with each other, although I could be biased. We got the usual IKEA desk and drawer combo, but with a very nice brick panel that he added on the wall to give it some texture. It's crazy how something so simple like a wallpaper or some panels against the wall will drastically change the look of the setup. We got a T monitor layout with a 240 hertz as the main and a 144 hertz as a secondary for multitasking and also for reference material. I love that he shifted the chin towards the outside to minimize the bezels between. But you could have also hidden the icons on your desktop temporarily just for the pictures. There we go, much better. For the peripherals, he's rocking a Black Widow X Tournament Edition keyboard and a Model D- with excellent cable work through the desk. And here we see some more pencil drawers. Ladies and gents, we have started a revolution. Everything else under here is perfectly managed with tons of raceways, power strips, and cable clips to keep a nice and clean path. Interestingly enough, Jumar put his speakers up top on the wall shelves to minimize clutter on the desk, but also to prevent blocking the boom arm that's holding his microphone in the event that he needs to pull it out. Now the PC on the other hand is stunning. Such a badass custom loop inside the O11. We got a push and pull configuration up top with a digital plate and a temperature reader. It looks really good. The specs might be a bit outdated, but honestly, a GTX 1080 is all you really need to run Valorant these days above 240 FPS. So if that's the only game you play, then you don't need to upgrade. Also really nice cable work in the back, by the way. I can tell you put in a lot of love and care into the setup. Thank you for coming on the show. Coming up next is a very nice laptop setup by Lucas, who's a computer science student from Germany. Apart from studying, he also uses the setup for music production, media consumption, and gaming on the downtime. And surprisingly, he does it all on a laptop, but don't let the size fool you. It's actually packing quite the heat. Wait a minute. There's no way this setup is powered by an actual desktop PC. Because I see the specs in the notes here, but where is the PC tower? One eternity later. Oh my god, you guys would never guess where he put the PC. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds to make a guess. So the PC powering the entire setup isn't even in the same room. It's actually in the other room behind a sofa. This means he had to replace all the cables with longer ones and he had to drill a hole in the wall to pass them through and he used a bunch of raceways that ultimately led back into the setup. I have never seen this level of commitment. This guy is dedicated to maintaining a clean and wireless look, and I think he achieved that pretty easily. The only thing I don't understand is the desk choice. It's clearly a sit and stand desk, but he has the TV mounted on a floor stand. So wouldn't that make the height adjustment feature useless since the TV won't be able to move with the desk? Since we're talking about the PC, might as well check out the specs. So we got a 9900K and an RTX 3090 Founders Edition quietly hidden inside the case. 
For peripherals, no surprise, he went wireless with the Logitech G915 keyboard and the G Pro X Super Lite mouse. I like how most of the heavy gear isn't on the desk, like the TV and the speakers. He put them on floor stands, which was a very smart move. This just frees up more space on the desk to where he can organize some of his other gear. You know, Lucas, you strike me as a person who likes to keep a neat and tidy workspace. So why not pick up a small drawer that you can install underneath your desk to store your remotes? Aside from that minor nitpick and the questionable choice of going with a motorized desk, I think the setup looks really good. Also, this is kind of off topic, but what are those random square panels that you have hanging from your ceiling and the walls? Are they custom made or did you buy them like that because they look really cool and they complement your house nicely? But either way, thank you for coming on the show. Wrapping up the episode is a fellow Armenian subscriber who was featured on Setup Wars episode 199 over two years ago. And since then, he has made some very nice changes to his laptop setup. So Mesrop is a software engineer who currently resides in Prague. And this is the setup that he uses for pretty much everything, even gaming with the MacBook, which I'll go over how he's able to do that later. So he's rocking two 27 inch 4K monitors that he hooked up to his sit and stand desk and both are plugged into his MacBook Pro 16, which is also clamped to the desk. This way he's able to move it around and get that perfect angle. Wireless peripherals as expected. We got the Magic Trackpad, Logitech MX Keys keyboard, and an MX Master 3 mouse, all in the same color scheme for consistency. For video calls and listening to music, he uses the Sony WH-1000s that he keeps in the drawer. But for everything else, he relies on the Kanto YU-4s, which are laid on their sides. I get why you had to do that, but at least put some padding underneath to absorb vibrations. I can probably make an entire video just on MesserUp's cable management. I thought the last setup was impressive, but damn, this one is just so attractive. I could look at it all day. Everything is so precisely routed and wrapped together, it could very well be therapeutic to look at. Even the console setup behind him was given the same cable management treatment. I do love the dedication here. So speaking of the console, he also games at his setup using PS Remote Play. Although I would personally kick back on the couch and play on a bigger screen to also avoid latency, but it's nice that he has options. I take Messer up as a business in the front and party in the back kind of guy. And his setup certainly reflects that with all work during the day and RGB at night. In fact, he has all the lights synced up to his phone so he can change it up with a press of a button or simply through Google Voice commands. Okay, Google. Activate Energize in Office. Alright, activating the Energize. There's even a little bit of personalization with the Star Wars and Marvel Lego figurines. Since he's currently renting the apartment, he's not allowed to drill into the walls, so he decided to make use of the already mounted wall shelf, which explains why it's not really centered with the setup. I definitely see some similarities from your old setup, but you've made a lot of very impressive changes since then. I feel like the setup's more functional and aesthetically pleasing to look at. Thank you for coming back on the show. As always, let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your absolute favorite. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, do let me know by tossing a like before we head out. If you're new here, consider subscribing because I do host Setup Wars every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.